The next thing I want to review with lines is how you can create an equation of a line given two points or two functional values. Just like we can draw a line with two points, we can also create an equation of a line with two points. Now, it turns out it's not too hard to do. Um, if you have two points, the very first thing you need is to find the slope. After you find the slope, then you can go back and do one of two things to create the equation. You can either use the slope-intercept form, or you can use something called the point-slope form, which you may have learned in a previous math class. Either one of those is going to get you to a place where you can create the final equation for the function and write it simplified in slope-intercept form. I'm going to show both techniques here um, with a couple of examples. So say we are given, an, um, we want to find an equation for linear function f, given that f of 1 is equal to 3 and f of 4 is equal to 9. Well, a little reminder, these functional values are really just telling me I've got two points. Remember, the input is the x value, the output is the y value. So this, this statement of f of 1 equals 3 is just telling me I have the point 1, 3. Likewise, f of 4 equals 9 is telling me I have the point 4, 9. First step, no matter which of the techniques you're using, find the slope. To find the slope, we're going to uh, subtract the y values. Remember, the numerator is about y values, so I'm going to subtract 9 and 3. Now, because I subtracted the, nine, the 3 from the 9 in that order, 9 minus 3, I must subtract the x values the same way. The 9's corresponding x value is 4, the 3's corresponding x value is 1. So a quick double check before we continue on, whatever is over top of each other, those should be from the same point. 4, 9 is from the point 4, 9, and 1, 3, there it is. So that's a quick check before we do any calculations. Then calculating, the slope is going to be in the numerator 6 and the denominator 3, which is 2. So we have a slope of 2. Now, once you have the slope of 2, there are two techniques you can use, and I'm just going to do both of them here. One technique, method 1, is to use the slope-intercept form to find the y-intercept. So we're going to use mx plus b. Now, how you do this is we're going to put, take one of the points, you can do either point, and we're going to plug it in for x and y, and we're going to plug the slope we found in for m. So I'm just going to use the nicer point because it's smaller, 1, 3. We're going to put the 3 in for y, the slope is 2, and the x value is 1. What that enables us to do when we, is then have an equation with just a single unknown, b, and we can solve for it. So just do the calculation, 2 times 1 is 2, then subtract 2 from both sides, and we see that b is 1. Once you have that the slope is, or the y-intercept is 1, we can write this as a function. So remember, this is function f, so we'd say f of x equals mx plus b, just like this. Um, so the m is 2, x plus b is 1. So we get the function f of x equals 2x plus 1. Now, we should always check that by plugging both points back in. So I will plug both points back in starting with 1, 3. If I plug the 3 in for y and the 1 in for x, I do get a true statement because 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. We need to check the other point as well, especially the other point because we didn't use it when we calculated b. So plug the 9 in for y, the 4 in for x plus 1, calculate 9 equals 8 plus 1 is 9, that checks. So it's important to make sure you check both points because you've really used one of them to calculate the b with, but the equation must work with the other one as well. If, you in, if it ends up not working with one of the points, you either have a problem in this part of the process or you may even have a problem in the slope originally. Let's do the other method, which is using what's called the point-slope form. Now, the advantage of using the point-slope form and getting used to it is you'll see this form used in calculus textbooks if you're continuing on to calculus, also in 111 textbooks. So this is something you see in later math classes. When we work with this method, the other advantage is that you don't have to sub anything back in. You're going to plug everything in at once and just simplify. Now, how this formula works is, again, you're going to use the slope, which we found to be 2, and then the variables without subscripts stay variables, and the variables with subscripts is where you put the point in. And I'm just going to say point 1 again, 1, 3. So x sub 1 would be the 1, 
and y sub 1 would be the y value of 3. Once I have that plugged in, I just simplify. y minus 3 equals distribute the 2, 2x minus 2, and then add the 3 to both sides, y equals 2x plus well, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Notice, same equation we had over here, we just need to write it in function form. So f of x equals 2x plus 1. Same answer that we got both ways. Um, if I hadn't already checked this answer, I would go ahead and check it with both points. But as you can see, we've already done that. It does work. Let's do one more example. Let's say we want to find the equation for the linear function g, given that g of negative 2 equals 5 and g of 4 equals 1. So this first functional value is telling us we have a point at negative 2, 5. The second functional value is telling us we have a point at 4, 1. So first step, whichever method you want to use, you need to find the slope. So remember, always in the numerator, subtract the y values. 1 minus 5 then divide the x values and make sure you have them in the same order as you subtracted the y values. So 4 minus, now when we subtract a negative, be careful there, it's 4 minus 2 we're going to end up adding. Double check before you go on, do you have corresponding points right over top of each other? Yes, you do. 4, 1, negative 2, 5, when I read from the bottom up. So I plug these in consistently. Oops, let's make this blue m is equal to negative 4 on top over 4 plus 2, because remember when we subtract a negative, we get a positive, it would be 6. So when we simplify, this doesn't simplify all the way away, it, it's still going to remain a fraction. Don't make that into a decimal, keep it a fraction, and let's work with the exact value. So the slope is negative 2 thirds. Once again, there are two methods we can take. We can do the method with y. Uh, mx plus b, or we can do the method where we use the point slope form. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. It's your choice. Both of them can get you to the same place. Like I said, the second method you're going to see more often in calculus textbooks and in linear algebra textbooks. Either way, the slope in both cases is negative 2, 3. We can use either point. Because it doesn't have a negative, I'm going to use 4, 1. It's your choice, though. You can get the same answer either way. In fact, I think what I'll do is I'll use 4-1 in, one, uh, in one method, and I'll use negative 2-5 in the other method, and you'll see that you get the same thing. So um, let's plug the point in, 4-1. So 1 for y. Slope is negative 2 thirds. The x value is 4, and we're going to be solving for b. So remember, anytime you have a whole number times a fraction, write the whole number over 1. So this is 1 equals negative 8 over 3 plus b. We would add the 8 thirds to both sides to get b. So this would be uh, 1 is 3 over 3 because I need a common denominator to add it to the 8 thirds. So I would have 11 thirds equals b. It took a little longer because of the fraction, but just plug on through it, just basic fraction calculation. Once we have b, we need to write the function out all the way g of x is equal to, slope is negative 2 thirds x, and then the b value is plus 11 thirds. So there's our function. Don't forget, you could check those points. I'll come back and do that after I've done the second method. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. The way the second method works with the point slope form is you put the slope in, Oops, it's not 2 in this example. It is negative 2 thirds. Thinking of the last example. And then remember the x and the y's without subscripts stay x and y in this method. And we're going to put the point we've chosen, which I decided to use the other point just to show that it would work. Um, when I put the x value of negative 2 in, remember it's a negative, negative 2. Watch your calculations there that you don't lose a negative. And then a 5 for y. So y minus 5 equals negative 2 thirds times the quantity x minus a negative 2. Now when you subtract a negative, that's just a positive. I'm going to make that positive right away. y minus 5 equals distribute the negative 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds x, plus now remember, this is 2 over 1. When you multiply a fraction by a whole number, multiply the numerators. And because it's going to come out to be negative, I'm going to change that plus to a minus. 
minus 4 over 3. Last step, I need to move this 5 over. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. When I do that, y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 4 thirds plus 5. I'm going to need a common denominator. The common denominator there is going to be 3. So I'm going to write, rewrite the 5 as 15 thirds. And then I can add these two whole numbers, or fractions, but constant numbers. Negative 4 plus 15 is going to be 11. So I get y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 11 thirds, which is exactly what I had in the other method. So this final step would be to write it in function notation. g of x equals negative 2 thirds x plus 11 thirds. Same result. Your choice which method you want to use. Don't forget, check these. Since I have room, I'll check one of the points over here and then the other point over there. So I'm going to check negative 2, 5 on this one. You should always check both. It's the same equation, so I'm just going to check one point under one and one point under the other. Um, if I put in the 5 for y and the negative 2 in for x, remember it's negative 2 over 1. When I multiply straight across, I get 4 over 3 plus 11 over 3. 4 plus 11, it does give me 15. 15 over 3 is 5. So that one checks. Ran out a little bit of room at the end. And then checking the 4, 1 in this equation. Remember, it's the same equation. I could have done that. I'm just using this for room. Uh, I put the 1 in for y, the 4 in for x. Remember, when you multiply a fraction by a whole number, it's over 1, plus 11 thirds, means I'm going to get negative 8 thirds plus 11 thirds. Negative 8 plus 11 is 3 over 3, so we get 1 equals 3 over 3 is 1. So the both points check in the equation that we get. Again, two methods, your choice which method to use. But all we need is two points to create any line, not only the graph, but the equation.